सारे हर के सारे के सारे हरे हम हरे हर हरे हम हरे हरे सारे सारे हरे हरे हम हरे हम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे Oh, 
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram Hare 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 <laughs> His divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki, this confounder, Acharya, His divine grace, Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai on Vishnu Pad Paramahans Parivajak Acharya, Stotra Sattva Sri Sriman, His divine grace, 
श्री भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती महाराज की अनंत कौड़ी वैष्णव की नम छाय श्री हरिदास ठाकुर की श्री रूप सनातन भक्त रघुनाथ श्री जीव गोपाल बा दास रघुनाथ सर गोस्वामी की प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद से अद्वैत गदाधार श्री बासरी गौ भक्त वृंद की श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड रागुन गिरी गौ गोदान की वृंदावन धाम की नवद्वीप मायापुर धाम की श्री जगन्नाथपुर पुरुषोत्तम क्षेत्र धाम की गंग माई की जुमुन माई की तुलसी महारानी की भक्ति रेवी की समबीर भक्त वृंद की श्री श्री की शोर की शोर के श्री श्री की शोर की शोर के श्री श्री की शोर की शोर के श्री जगन्नाथ बलदेव श्री बद महारानी के श्री श्री गौनथा की महामहोत्सव थे बाप श्री जीव गोस्वामी की श्री हरिराम शंकर धाम के नमस्ते नर सिंहाय प्रहलाद लाद गायन हिरण्याकाशे पूर्वक्ष शिला कालाथो नृसिंह पर तो नृसिंह यतो यतो यामित तो नृसिंह सिंह शरण प्रपद तब कर कमल वरे न अद्भुत सिंह दलित हिरण्य कशिप तनु भृंगा केशव दूता नर हरि रूप जय जगदीश जय जगदीश जगदीश Jai Hind, 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 J
श्री नरसिंह देव भगवान की लतराज प्रलाद महाराज की जाए लेट्स ऑल विथ ऑल द एयर वी कैन गेट इन आवर लंग्स लाउडली से हरी बोल टू वेलकम बैक हिज ओलिनेस चंदवले महाराज टू शिकागो द भागवतम डिस्क्राइब्स that when krishna returned to dwaraka then the residents felt as if life had come back to their bodies otherwise they because krishna was absent in dwaraka their their bodies were breathing and all that but they had no life in them and uh, so for us when you come back it's really very very happy to see maharaj and uh, thank you for leading kirtan and putting life back um, usually i don't dance at all but uh, just being in any whenever it's your kirtan somehow it's uh, very different for me so thank you so much maraj will be here with us uh, until 13th of january so tonight there is a presentation on the holy name and then next uh, saturday and sunday is a very wonderful seminar on the guru disciple relationship and i think it'll be a very very wonderful uh, time to hear and discuss and share so please do make it possible to attend <clears throat> invite your other friends as well uh, because it's uh, the most essential topic in krishna consciousness uh, without which executing anything is is uh, almost impossible so mara just traveled far and wide uh, mostly eastern europe india other places and uh coming back to chicago so very 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 happy and honored maraj that you're back with us thank you so much and we look forward to serving you and hearing from you and taking as much association of yours that's available and thank you so much for being kind to to give so much of your time to us i very much appreciate it thank you hari krishna I'm glad so happy you came. <laughs> like when you came into the room then the kirtan really had some meaning. I don't know. I'm just going to give it to you. No. I'm so happy to see you. Yeah, please. I don't want to sit there. Do the disrespect and really like the chances for it. If you're sleeping then I think you're meditating. <laughs> that's what I said earlier but that's not what's happening. Thank you for coming. Okay, I'll, okay, I'll be here all morning hopefully. <laughs> All right. Hare Krishna. So we'll begin with Jai Radha Madhava. Does anyone have them those smaller cartons I was using for the kirtan? Those are these are a little bit too big. Thank you. Jai Radha Madhava Kunjavi Hari Radha Madhava Kunjavi Hari Jaya Gopi Jaya Gopi 
His divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Sri Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai. Sri Siki Shore Ki Shori Ki Jai. Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani Ki Jai. Sri Si Gornitai Ki Jai. Gaur Pramanandi. Glories to the assembled devotees. Glories to the assembled devotees. Glories to Sri Guru and Sri Guranga. So I chose a topic that everyone is familiar with. <laughs> Nothing esoteric, but very complete. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya All together. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we hear 
quite often the glories of the Holy Name. We hear quite often the glories of those who chant the Holy Names of the Lord. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutalaya Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamaya Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nevasesa Sunyavadi Pasyatyare Satarine Shri Krishna Chaitana Prahunata Ananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasati Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare It was a rhetorical little discussion between two of Prabhupada's godbrothers. One was a very young godbrother and one was a quite senior godbrother. The senior godbrother had gone overseas on behalf of his spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, in order to preach Krishna consciousness. He went to London, had great success in meeting what we say very important people in London, such as lords and very respectable ladies also, and uh, got some acclaim some recognition and was welcomed everywhere. But as far as really establishing anything in a fundamental way or a, uh, a practical way, nothing really developed. It wasn't until A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada came to the West and things started to develop. His godbrothers did the same thing. They tried. What was the qualification? And this is the rhetorical discussion. Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj was Prabhupada's younger godbrother and one who constantly and with great enthusiasm and always very joyful chanted Hare Krishna. If you would see him, he would be laughing and chanting and smiling and doing bhajans. He loved, he chanted 24 hours a day, no question. He said to Prabhupada's, who was a senior god-brother, he was a sannyasi, he said, uh, you went to the West, and Bhaktivedanta, he also went to the West. You are a great scholar, you know the Vedas quite well, and Bhaktivedanta, he also is a great scholar of the Vedas. You failed, he succeeded. Why? <laughs> Then there was no answer from the senior godbrother, and then Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj gave the, the answer because Bhaktivedanta had full faith in the holy name of the Lord. That was the difference. And because Prabhupada had that full faith in the holy name of the Lord, we have this ISKCON society. There's a beautiful verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam, 12th canto, chapter 3, verse number 51. Kaler dosha nidi rajan asti eko mahagun kirtana eva krishnasya mukta sangam param vajep. What is this verse saying? We live in the age that is considered the winter of all ages. It's interesting, it's the winter now. So we know everything slows down. And people struggle a lot harder to maintain and to progress in this age or this time because of the difficulties imposed by the winter season. That's natural. So there are four ages. And we live in the, what is called the Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga started about 5,133 years ago, to be exact. <laughs> That's the actual beginning of the age. And since that time, the quality of life has deteriorated more and more and more. This verse is spoken by Sukadev Goswami. And he says to Maharaj Pariksit, Kaler dosha nidi. Interesting, dosha. Dosha means false, and nidi means ocean. If you look at an ocean, it's quite vast, it's very deep. You can't measure the ocean. Last year I was on a boat on an ocean. And we were looking in all directions and all we could see was water. 
That's all, except for up. <laughs> With water everywhere. And you feel like you're just so insignificant and so vulnerable. You feel very vulnerable. It was just water everywhere. And we, then I realized this is just a small portion of the actual water on this planet. And if we were to go down into the depth of the ocean, we'd probably go for maybe a mile or two or even more. That's, the ocean is quite vast. And sometimes we hear or we see the analogy of something that is great and immeasurable and so powerful, and the word ocean is used. So Sukadev Goswami says, this age is an ocean of faults. <laughs> Whatever way you turn, there's difficulty. It's just the way it is. And if you complain, why is it like that? It's like complaining, why is the winter cold? <laughs> because it's the winter. <laughs> it's just the way it is. This is the age of Kali, Kali Yuga, or the age of difficulties, quarrel, hypocrisy, lying, cheat, on all levels. There is, and there is so many, many things coming at you constantly, either from your own mind and body, or from outside, from other living entities, or from the higher realms. It's just the way this age is. You can't change it. But you can do one thing, you can somehow or other, just like in the winter time, if you have nice clothes and it's, you know, you bundle up very nice, you hardly feel the cold. So in the same way, there is the insulation from the effects of Kali Yuga. And therefore, Sukadev Goswami says, Kaler dosha nidi rajan, rajan means king. But he says, asti echo. There's one. Boon. Asti echo mahagun. He says maha. He doesn't say gun. Gun means benediction. He says mahagun. Maha means the greatest of all benedictions that one can come across. And what is that? Kirtana eva Krishnasya. Krishna kirtan. Or the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And then he ends the verse by saying, What's the result? Mukta Sangam Param Bajet. One can be purified from the effects of Kali Yuga, attain pure God consciousness, and enter into the spiritual world, even while one is still present in this material body. This verse is more like a pinnacle of the glorifications of the holy names of the Lord. Verse after verse. So we see. Now Prabhupada told us we chant 16 rounds, right? Minimum. Not maximum. <laughs> Minimum. Why do we chant? What's the purpose of chanting? Chanting does so many things. What Sukadev Goswami is saying in that verse is that it's just one aspect of the glories of the Holy Name. Just one. And what is that? You're unaffected by the age of Kali. Or at the same time, just like you're unaffected by the winter season, you're similarly, the age of Kali can't touch you. That's the power of Krishna's name. Because Krishna's name is as good as Krishna himself. We hear that non-different. Nama Chintamani Krishnas Chaitanya Rasra Vigraha Purna Surya Nitya Mukta Abhinna Tvam Nami Nami No Abhinna. Abhinna means non-different. Something is different but at the same time the same. So you, well, there's Krishna and there's Krishna's name. So we might say well that's two different things. But the Shastras say no, it's the same. And it's abhinam. There's no difference. No difference. So no difference means not a slightest bit of difference. But there is a difference. And the, Ashar and the acharyas give the difference that Krishna is merciful, but his holy name 
is more merciful. That's the only difference. That's a wonderful difference. It's not easy to approach Krishna. Krishna is, is very difficult to approach. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Vedaham samatitani bhavitarjuna bhavishyami chibhutani mantu vedanarakaschina. He says, I know everything in the past, I know all things that are happening in the present, and I know all things that are yet to come. I also know no all living entities. But then he ends the verse by saying, but me, nobody knows. <laughs> Powerful verse from Bhagavad Gita. And in the same chapter, in about 23 verses earlier, he says the same thing. Hardly anybody knows me. In fact, Krishna is so great that even Krishna doesn't know himself. Does that make sense? No, but it's true. <laughs> because spirit is always increasing, whereas matter increases to a certain level and then decreases. Spirit never decreases, it's always expanding, becoming more and more unlimited with it, the unlimited. So Krishna, he is always getting greater and greater and greater. If you look at the logic, at the same time, spirit cannot be stagnant. Spirit means no restriction. Something un, that is not measurable, that is not restricted, that has no counterpart at the same time, that's spirit. Krishna is the whole, the spirit whole, and therefore he's always expanding more and more. So sometimes the acharyas say to Krishna, when he, he wants to know himself, he has to stop and think, and then he realizes he gets greater. In fact, what is the purpose of Lord Chaitanya's appearance? To, for Krishna to know himself. Because there's only one person that really knows Krishna, and that's Radharani. So he has to become Radharani's mood of devotion to understand himself through her love for him. That's, that's Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya is amazing. Lord Chaitanya is Krishna, but with the, with the bhav and love of Radharani, to understand Krishna through Radharani's own love. That's, that's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And so, therefore, it's not easy to know Krishna. It's very difficult. But through Krishna's holy name, we can purify ourselves in such a way that we can come to the platform of knowing enough about Krishna to be completely purified from all material contamination and actually reach the stage of pure love of God simply by chanting the holy names of the Lord. The Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is the most powerful, but we say, spiritual entity in existence. There is a thing called weapon, and the word weapon means shastra. And there is another word called shastra, shastra and shastra. They're spelled the same, but the emphasis is different. So shastra is scripture, and shastra means weapon. So in this age, what is the weapon to destroy the effects of Kali Yuga? It's Krishna's holy name. So Krishna's holy name actually becomes the weapon to purify ourselves from all material existence. Now, when we chant the holy names of the Lord, what are we doing? We're actually connecting ourselves with Krishna. There's a connection. And the more we absorb ourselves in the chanting of the holy names, the more the connection becomes stronger and stronger. How do, you, how do we chant the holy names of the Lord? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives the formula, Trinadapi Suni Chena, Tayor Iva Sahishnuna, Amanina Mamanadena, Kirtaniya Sadari. Now this is interesting. The last line gives the, gives the conclusion. Kirtaniya Sada. Sada means always. The goal of this Krishna conscious movement is to always remember Krishna. Now that's hard, right? 
because the mind has so many programs, right? The mind is like a computer. Good, good example. In fact, I think, I'm pretty sure, they designed a computer after the mind. They used the mind to really design a computer. Because when you turn on the computer and you put something up on the screen, you know that what's on the screen is not really everything in the computer. There is a lot more to the computer than just what's on the screen. So at the same time, the mind is full of so many thoughts, desires, attachments. And therefore the mind is very difficult to control. Very difficult. Extremely difficult. It says, Arjun said to Krishna, you want me to control the mind? You're asking me to control the wind. That's how hard it is to control the mind. It's very difficult. Why? Because the mind is always trying to enjoy this material energy by using the senses in contact with the objects of the senses. The mind, that's the mind's program. So the intelligence keeps the mind directed in the right way. But if the intelligence is of the same nature of the mind, then you got two enemies instead of one. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, partners in crime. You got it, you got you can't really deal with the mind. It just doesn't want to do what you want. But you can deal with the intelligence, because the intelligence is a little bit more. Someone asked Prabhupada, what's the difference between the mind and the intelligence? Prabhupada said, you're standing on a high building and you look down and you say, the mind says, jump. And the intelligence says, don't do it. <laughs> That's the difference. <laughs> Maybe you've experienced something like that. I should punch that guy in the nose. No, I better not. <laughs> the difference between the mind and the intelligence. <laughs> the mind wants to do what it wants. The intelligence is supposed to control the mind in such a way that it keeps the living entity from going down like that. So, therefore, we have to purify our intelligence by understanding Shastra. And Shastra says that the success of your practice of Krishna consciousness depends on the quality of your chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. This is the essence of the whole practice. Everything is there. So, and I use the word practice because that's what it is. We have to practice to chant more and more and more. Because the nature of the soul, the soul loves to chant. The soul will chant 24 hours a day if it could. In fact, it does. But the mind doesn't want to do it. The mind wants to do what it wants to do. So therefore, the intelligence is meant to keep the mind directed towards the desire of the soul and therefore keep connection with Krishna. So the process is to try to remember Krishna 24 hours a day. I'll read something here. Something very interesting. I forgot to write it down. Very well. <laughs> anyway, considering all these points, intelligent men decide to solve all problems by devotional service of the chanting of the holy name. That holy name is situated in everyone's heart and is the mind, mind means like gold mine, mind of all auspicious qualities. Such persons are not within the jurisdiction of my punishment. Yamaraj is speaking. He is the Lord of death. Those who commit sinful activity are subject to the punishment of Yamaraj. But those who chant the holy name, and then he goes on to say, generally, these persons never commit sinful activities, but even if by mistake or because of some bewilderment or illusion they sometimes commit sinful activities, they are protected from sinful reaction because they always chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So here's this Prabhupada said the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is the panacea. 
You know what the word panacea means? It means cure all. Something that works for everything. If you can get something, I don't know, what would be an example in this material world, that if you have it, you have everything. Uh, I guess if you have love, you have everything, right? Because everything is included in love. Happiness, satisfaction, peace of mind, good fortune. So, using that same analogy, when, when one is connected to the holy name of the Lord, there's nothing outside. Everything is found in Krishna's name. And that's the mercy in this age. Because this age, as we mentioned earlier, is so full of difficulties. Srila Prabhupada gives the example. He said, I was on a boat. We know Prabhupada came to America 39 days on the ocean, seasick, so many difficulties, two heart attacks. Very, what Srila Prabhupada had to go through to bring Krishna consciousness to the West, no one could do it, especially at the age of 70 years old. But he describes, in describing the nature of this material world, he said, well, I was on the boat that it was, the, the ocean was rough, and therefore seasick. But then when the ocean was calm, fog. He says, one way it's bad, the other way it's also bad. So that's this material world. If we can learn one thing, if you can learn one thing from this lesson, and if you can learn this one thing that I'm about to say, your life will make Great progress. Jai Sri Sri Kishore Kishore Ki Jai. Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani Ki Jai Gornitai Ki Jai. What is that one thing? Don't try to be happy in this world. As long as you're trying to be happy in this world, you will always get suffering. That's all. <laughs> Now, everyone wants to be happy, all right? So, how can you not try for something that is natural, right? To be happy is natural. In fact, that's the pursuit of life, to be happy. But, there's a story. One man, he's looking, looking, looking on the ground, he's looking, he's looking, he's looking, can't find. His friend comes along, and says, oh, my dear friend, what are you looking for? He said, I lost some money. He said, can I help you look for it? Of course. So they're both looking. After some time, the friend says, are you sure you lost the money here? He said, no, I lost it down there, but there's more light here. <laughs> That's our, we're looking for happiness because it looks like you can see it in this world. But it's not there. It looks like it. That's called maya. But happiness exists eternally on the spiritual level. So when we stop trying to look for happiness in the material world, then when we chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, then our chanting will really become powerful. Because then you're beginning, you're moving forward fast on the spiritual. As long as we're looking towards material life for some satisfaction, some happiness, some, what we say, re reciprocation, we'll always be disappointed. And we'll miss the mercy of Krishna, and miss the mercy of the Holy Name. So we have to interact with the material energy. It's just the way it is. But you should understand that interaction is only a necessary burden, that's all. It's just a necessary burden. It doesn't give you happiness, it just gives you, it just consumes your energy and time, that's all. The happiness is found in chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. That is the formula for success. So we have to practice chanting more and more. K 
kirtan, japa, do it as much as possible. When you're, when you're doing your service, chant. When you're walking, chant. When you're driving, chant. When you're fighting with your wife, chant. <laughs> Just, doesn't matter what you're doing, chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And as you, yeah, that's, you know, that's, <laughs> as you practice this chanting more and more, you'll find it becomes easier and easier. Why? Because it's a practice, that's all. Prabhupada said, you got to think of something, because that's the nature of the mind. It's never vacant. It's always thinking about something or complaining about something. Think of Krishna. That's all. Put Krishna in your mind all the time. And someone asked me a question just the other day, because I was talking about this same subject. And they said, if I think of Krishna all the time, will I be able to get my work done? So what do you think the answer is? Not only you get your work done, but you get it, you'll do it better. You'll do it better. Because now there's two people working. <laughs> you and the holy name. So this, this practice of the holy name really is the happiness we're looking for. Even if there's no ecstasy. Don't worry about ecstasy. Ecstasy comes when Krishna wants it. You can't make ecstasy happen. It's not within our power to make ecstasy happen. That's the gift from Krishna, from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That happens when the, when the Lord is really pleased and He delivers His mercy in that way. All we have to do is find satisfaction in remembering Krishna. There's such satisfaction in doing the right thing. Right? Even if you... Sometimes you find yourself in a situation where you know, you're forced to be just like if someone is trying to provoke you and you know you shouldn't get angry and but you're being provoked and somehow or other you don't get angry. You succeed in, in not succumbing to anger. You feel a sense of satisfaction that you somehow or other overcame the temptation of the negative. Well that same way when we're chanting the holy name there's a sense of satisfaction that comes with just my chanting, even if there's no ecstasy. Because at that point, you're connected. Prabhupada says, as long as you're remembering Krishna, nothing can happen to you. That's the power of Krishna's holy name. So we have to practice chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra as much as possible. You can sing it. You can also write it. There's a thing, I think the word Hindi is Likita, Likita, it's a Hindi word, it means writing, yes. There's a, people write the holy name. You can actually write it, write your 16 rounds. <laughs> it's a nice meditation. <laughs> and when you write it, make it like nice swirls, you know, and make it an artistic. Make it as nice as you can. Imagine, some people ask me, Maharaj, I can't control my mind. I say, write the holy name. And you sit down and you start writing, your mind's controlled. If you surrender to it, that is. <laughs> if you don't surrender, that's, that's, that's a problem. So chanting, you can, you can write it, you can sing it, you can connect it to your breath, and you, can, you, can do it, you can do anything you can, in a rhythmic way, to connect the holy name to your existence. And by practicing this kind of, what we say, attention on Krishna, is success. Because Krishna consciousness is so easy. Yeah? Everybody agrees? <laughs> it's easy. But what makes it hard? The mind. That's all. It's the mind. And we all got a mind. <laughs> the mind makes everything difficult. If you tell the mind, point to your nose, it'll go like this, you know, like, uh, try to reach it like this. The 
mind just complicates everything. That's the nature of the mind. So we have to somehow or other realize that the process of Krishna consciousness is simply keeping the mind directed in the right way. That's all. In the Srimad Bhagavatam it says that some people say that spiritual life is easy and some people say spiritual life is difficult. So what is it? Easy or difficult? There's a rhetorical statement in the, in the context of that discussion. And then Prabhupada gives the answer. He says, for those who have no determination, it's difficult. And for those who are determined, it's easy. So that's the difference. Everybody want, has some goal in life, right? To be, you know, to get a good grades in college or university, get a good job, find a good partner in your life, get a nice material arrangement like that. People have goals, right? And they're willing to sacrifice whatever they have as far as time and energy and resources to receive those goals. But if you become Krishna conscious, you achieve all your goals. Because by, by becoming Krishna conscious, there's nothing else to achieve. Everything is perfect because everything is contained within Krishna because Krishna is everything. So happiness, satisfaction, you know, facility, everything is there within Krishna consciousness. And the way to get it is to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. I'm making it sound pretty easy, right? So, but it, it's easy if we accept it, and if it's difficult if we don't accept it. Then it becomes easy. Just chant Hare Krishna. That's all. All the time. Sometimes people in India think, well, yeah, chanting Hare Krishna, that's for old people. I got nothing to do. We got jobs, we got, we got plans, so many things like that. But nobody knows what the future will be, how, whether you're going to be successful in your plans, or you're going to be around long enough to, fix, to execute your plans. That's the whole thing. So make a plan to become Krishna conscious. Even if you fail, your endeavor is worth it. Why? Because as long as you try to become Krishna conscious, you can't fail. Because Krishna's mercy will give you the success you need. Material life, in order to do something successful, things have to be in place. But in spiritual life, all you have to have is desire. That's all. You have to have that, and, and not a small desire, you have to have a strong desire. Because maya is always material energy, the mind, so many things, situations, is always pulling us the other way. That's all. But if we take shelter of Krishna's name, the process becomes easy. Everything's there in the name. <laughs> and there's so many verses. Lord Brahma says, Iti sodasakam nam nam kali kamasam nasanam nata paratayopayo sarva vedishu drishyate. He's in a beautiful verse he recites. It's from the Kali Santara Upanishads. And the second half of the verse goes, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This verse says, after searching through all Vedic literatures. Now, Vedic literatures are vast. If you were to try to calculate or even accumulate all Vedic literatures, you could fill this room from the top to the bottom with books, and still there would be more Vedic literatures. The Vedas are so vast. The Vedas are unlimited. And he says, after searching through all the Vedic literatures, and there's so many categories of Vedic literatures, there is no more direct, sublime, and easy method for self-realization in this age than chanting these 16, round, 16 words, and he mentions the Maha Mantra. So Lord Brahma, who's Lord Brahma? He's the, he's the head of the universe. His intelligence is so great that he has to manage the universe, 
Imagine what kind of intelligence that is. We have a hard time managing keeping our room clean, right? <laughs> With the speak of, you know, uh, we can't even manage, you know, the house sometimes. To manage a factory, to manage a corporation, that's great. To manage a universe, <laughs> try it. <laughs> it's difficult, but Brahma does. And he's saying that, you know, I've searched through all the Vedas and I have found nothing more direct, sublime than chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So that's the special mercy in this age. We take it for granted. We think, oh yes, chanting, there's, there's, yeah, there's so many things to do, I know. But actually, satatam kirtayantomam yatantatastadadritaha. What is the rest of that verse? Yatanta. Mitya yukta pupasate. It's from the Bhagavad Gita. Somebody asked me one time, where does it say in the Bhagavad Gita you have to chant Hare Krishna? And there's the verse, satatam kirtayantomam. And Prabhupada was asked the same question. Later on I heard Prabhupada answer the same way. That's the verse. That Krishna is saying, always chant my glories. Always. So this is, this is the essence of spiritual life. We, we like to see uh, success and by how much we can do. Right? How much I get done, that's my success in life, right? That's called the mode of passion. I got to do something, I did it, success, right? So people calculate success by how much they do or how much they have, both. But spiritual life is not by how much you do or how much you have, but who you are. It's about being. The mode of ignorance says, people in the mode of ignorance, they say, if I can get something, then I can do something, and then I can be something. Mode of ignorance. First thing is to get. And then if I get something, then I can do something. And then maybe because of that I'll be something. Mode of ignorance. Mode of passion means I'll do something, then I'll get something. And then I can become something. But the mode of goodness is different, which is the mode that is the basis for the practice of spiritual life. If I can be something, then I can do something, then I can get something. So it's not about getting or doing, it's about being. So therefore, the material energy says your success is how much what you do or what you can get. Spiritual life is not like that. It's what you are, your character. So therefore, we build our character through chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. We build our character through practicing the qualities of a, of a Vaishnava that is conducive to the practice of chanting Hare Krishna. Because there are certain qualities that are conducive to chanting. Humility, tolerance, respect for others and not asking respect for oneself. Lord Chaitanya gives the formula. So, therefore, by cultivating these qualities at the same time as we chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, we'll find that our practice of Krishna consciousness becomes easy. Becomes easy. But then again, it's like painting a picture. <coughs> It's just, when you start, you have to see how you're going to proceed. So, but most of the, our problem is our lives are filled with so many things to do, right? Got to go here, got to do this, so many things. But what happens when you get sick? How much can you do? And your life slows down. Then you can read some books, right? Sometimes you think, wow, so good, I got sick, I can read now. <laughs> You can get more into the intellectual aspect of life. <laughs> of course, we don't wish that on anybody, and nobody thinks about that way. Yeah. But you see that we, the finer things in life, we, we miss because we're so busy doing things. We're trying to get things. Right? 
Now, even in Krishna consciousness, we have to do our service. That's important. But the basis is, of our service, is the quality of our chanting. There's the story, don't put the water in the boat, but put the boat in the water. Putting the boat in the water means your, the boat is your, your sadhana and the water is your means to cross over the material energy. So putting the water in the boat means doing, 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 but not really chanting or reading or associating with devotees enough. Because by doing that, we find that's the essence of the practice of Krishna consciousness. Of course we have to do our service. But, if we're not hearing and chanting nicely, our service will become just like work. It'll be a burden. So if we're feeling a burden in our service, it's only due to one thing, we're not hearing and chanting enough. Because the essence of spiritual life is, Krishna says, Shrimvata Svakata Krishna Spurnya Shravana Kirtanaha Riddhyantos Sto abhidrani vid dunoti surit satam. That those who are eager to hear my glories, I appear in their heart and I cleanse away all their material attachments and they become fixed in hearing and chanting. So that's the essence of Krishna consciousness. So we have our service, but the essence is chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. We should always keep that first. Just like if you build a house, you start putting the windows on you know, when there's no foundation. <laughs> so you have a window floating on the air or something. You can't. You have to have a good foundation. So the foundation in our spiritual life is hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. This is the essence of the practice. And the, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, it says here, and I think there's one verse I said, Simply by chanting the, Hare, the holy name of Krishna once, once, just once, a person is relieved from all reactions of sinful life. One can complete the nine processes of devotional service simply by chanting the holy name. That's from Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Lila, chapter 15, verse number 107. Chapter verse 109, by chanting the holy name of the Lord, one dissolves his entanglement in material energy. After this, one becomes very attracted to Krishna, and thus dormant love for Krishna is awakened. So everything is there in Krishna's name. So we have to practice that more and more and more. That's all. Just practice chanting. Before you take rest at night, Chant. When you go to sleep, chant. When you wake up, chant. Just chant. Practice. It's easy if you have the desire. If you don't have the desire, it's difficult. It's not only difficult, it's impossible. So everything is situated on Krishna's name, like that. Okay, so seven, is that correct? 7.30 now? Mm -hmm. So some questions, Krishna's holy name. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj, um, you mentioned in the class uh, that chanting is the panacea, panacea <laughs> for uh, all problems. Mm -hmm. I just want to, I heard that many times in Prabhupada's classes, but I want to hear um, more about it or if you, if you have any personal examples where someone might be having um, uh, a problem related to his physical condition or mental condition, it was improved by chanting. Are there examples in ISKCON or uh, in uh, scriptures? Let me, let me clarify one thing. As long as you're in this material world, you're going to have problems. Or you're going to have challenges. Challenges are what we say, smaller problems. It's just the way this world is. 
As long as you have a material body, there's difficulties. As long as you have your association with other people, there's always difficulties. It's just the way the world is. You can't change that. The question is that when you chant the Hare Krishna mantra and you're fixed in chanting, you're not affected by the challenges and problems you come in contact with. You can rise above it. You can somehow tolerate it. You can somehow or other see it as Krishna's mercy. But if, we, if we're not focused on the essence, then when we get challenged in so many different ways, what are we going to do? We're going to resort to our own abilities, intelligence, past experience, to try to solve the problems. There's a beautiful story. It's a long story. I don't know if I'll have time to tell it. It takes about 20 minutes. <laughs> Should I tell the story? How many people say yes? Okay. All right. I don't know if I told this already here. Is Okay. So right after the battle of Kurukshetra, King Yudhisthira was now the king of the world. And the Pandavas had been victorious, the Kurus had been defeated. Yudhisthira started to open, made an open door policy where anyone who wanted to see him could come and meet the king, the emperor. That's very rare. But Prabhupada says that the emperors and the kings of those days were like fathers. They saw, their, they saw the citizens as their children. And therefore they ran the state in that mood. Nowadays it's not like that. <laughs> so, Yudhisthira had an open door policy. And Bhima, Bhima, that famous warrior, and he was standing guard by Yudhisthira's door and anybody who came. So one man came and said, Bhima, I got a problem. I got to see Yudhisthira. He said, well, actually, Yudhisthira is not available right now, but tell me the problem. He said, well, the most strangest thing happened. I made a garden. I made a beautiful garden with so many trees and flowers and shrubs and it was so nice and then I was thinking I should do something to protect the garden so I decided to build a wall around the garden to protect it. But as soon as I finished making the wall, the most strangest thing happened. The wall started to encroach on the garden and started to destroy the garden. I need an explanation. And Bhima said, well, um, uh, I, I think you better go see Yudhisthira. I can't handle this one. <laughs> so he went in. So after some time, another man came. And he said, oh, Bhima, I got to see Yudhisthira. I got this problem. He said, well, maybe you can tell me the problem. He said, well, you know, it's not a problem, but I just need an explanation. The strangest thing happened, I had this bucket filled with water and I decided to take the water out of the bucket and put it in cups and I filled five cups with the bucket. And then I started to put the water from the cups back into the bucket and the bucket was half filled. When I took the water out of the bucket and put it in the cups, it was filled and then when I put it back it was half filled. Bhima said, uh, well, you know, um, I think I should have stayed home today. <laughs> but you, you know, you can go home and you can go see Eunice there. So he went in. And then a third man came. And the third man said, oh, Bhima, I saw the strangest thing. I need an explanation. I know Eunice can help me. He's, he's the most intelligent. Bhima said, well, you know, I've been trying to solve problems today, help Bhima, uh, Yudhisthira out, so you can, you can ask me. He said, I saw there was this huge wall, and there was this elephant, and the elephant started to walk right towards the wall, it went right through the wall, crashed right through the wall, and then got almost all the way through, but right at the end, its little tiny tail got stuck in the wall. 
the big elephant got all the way through, but his tail got stuck. Bhima said, uh, hmm, hmm. Uh, yeah, okay. Go see Eunice <laughs> He couldn't handle that one either. So finally, a fourth man came. He said, Bhima, I got to tell Eunice just what happened. Something happened to me. It was just quite amazing. Bhima said, why don't you tell me? He said, well, I decided to go traveling. And I just decided to go in any direction. I just chose one direction. I just kept walking and walking and walking. And then all of a sudden, as I was walking, the whole atmosphere started to change and it became very dark. And then I started to look and everything became very, very foreboding. And I saw that all of a sudden everything was like rocks and mountains and shadows and it became very dark. And then I was looking and I realized it was everywhere around me and I was feeling really fearful and I didn't know what to do. I felt like I was being encroached upon by this darkness. So I started to try to get out of there and when I was walking and trying to leave, I didn't know which way to go and all of a sudden I looked down and I saw this green creeper growing out of the ground and I was thinking, this is amazing, this little beautiful creeper is growing in this dark place. So I decided to pull it and when I pulled it, the most amazing thing happened. All the darkness was gone and the sun came out and everything was clear and I was peaceful and calm. It was like it never happened. And Bhima said, hmm, interesting. Go see Eunice there. <laughs> so, after some time, Bhima goes in. And Eunice is there. He's by himself. And Bhima says, did you see those four men? And Eunice said, what four men? I didn't see any four men. He said, I sent four men in here. He said, oh, those four men. Soon. Krishna will leave the planet, and the age of Kali will be coming. Those four men represent the age of Kali. Bhima was curious. He said, well, can you explain their stories? He said, yes. The first man, yes, the garden with the wall. He says, the people will elect, the, citizen, the citizens will elect the government, to protect the people, but this, the government will destroy the people. You make a garden, and then you make a wall to protect the garden, and the wall destroys the garden. Governments in this age, right? They tax you to death. <laughs> right? <laughs> Governments. And you can't get any protection anyway, even if you want it. What's the second thing? Ah. The cups, yes, the cups. Oh, yes. Children, the parents will give so much to their children, care for them, treat them when they're sick, give them everything. But when the children grow up, they'll say, who cares about you? The bucket, you put the water in the cups, comes back half. Children will not respect their parents or honor their parents. This is the age of Kali. Third, the wall and the elephant. Yes, oh, the wall and the elephant, yes. If you have money, you can get justice. But if you're poor, even if you're innocent, there's no hope. So a rich man, he can go right through just buy his, he can buy justice, but the poor man always gets caught. So the little tail represents the poor man. Because he has no money, he can't get justice. That's the age of Kali. And the last one, Yudhisthira said, this is the beauty. That darkness simply represents Kali Yuga, and that little green creeper represents the holy name. So as soon as they pull the holy name, then all the darkness, all the difficulties of the age disappear. This is the magic of Krishna's holy name. Everything is there. So that story is from the Mahabharata. Everything's in the holy name. It says, any glorification of the holy name is simply 
an underestimation. It's not possible to overestimate the glories of the Holy Name. It's just not possible. Krishna's names, his forms, his qualities, his pastimes, everything is in Krishna's name. It's all there. Any other questions? Yes. Can you tell me your name also? Want to say that again? Curtis. Curtis. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. My question, you described spirit as always expanding. Mm -hmm. If God is all that there is, then where does the spirit go? It doesn't go anywhere. Spirit is. Spirit is what exists. Matter is always changing. Spirit is what is constant and, temp and eternal. It doesn't go anywhere. The spiritual world makes up three-fourths of the existence of everything. Creation and existence comprise the whole of all existence, but creation is only one-fourth. Creation is the material energy. In the, in the material energy, there is also spirit, because matter can't move without the presence of spirit. So spirit is always expanding. When you talk about space and, and time, length and breadth, you're talking on the material level. There's no time, there's no space, there's no limitation to spirit. It's ever expanding. It's inconceivable. And that's the nature of, of spirit. You can't conceive it simply by logic, reason, or intelligence, or even by imagination, you can't figure out spirit. So, God is everything, in the sense that he is the supreme spirit, but the material energy is his energy, which is a, another version of his energy, but it's a different kind of energy, that's all. It's, it changes, spirit never changes. Spirit just becomes greater and greater and greater. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's from the Shastras. Huh? <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, Drew, uh, hmm? say again? Derek. Derek, okay. There's a lot of, there's Derek and there's uh, Dayita and there's Drew, and there's a lot of Ds here. Huh? There's a few more I missed. Okay, thank you. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about decreasing inattention while chanting the holy name. How to decrease your inattention. Technique is a facilitator, but bhakti is the ultimate principle of success. We have to practice chanting by chanting from the heart. <laughs> The mind, if you chant from the mind, that's nice. But when you chant from the heart, then Krishna is really, really satisfied. How do you chant from the heart? That you realize, my dear Lord, I am so small, I am so helpless, I am so, what we say, overwhelmed by material energy. It's only by your mercy. So you call out for Krishna. That's why the holy name is actually in the vocative. It's in the mood of calling. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. So the mood of chanting is the mood of calling. So when we're chanting, we should be calling with Krishna from our heart. We don't have to make an external show of calling. We just call him. Connect the voice to your heart. That's all. You can do that. Your, your lungs are right here. Your heart's right here. Your breath is right near your lung, in the heart. So if you just meditate on, the, on your breath going into your heart, that's one way of connecting. It takes a little while to practice that. It's not generally recommended to try that. But you should understand that your breath 
is really the, the rhythm of the whole body. And it's right near the heart. It's right near the heart. So if we can just somehow or other connect our voice and, and talk from your heart. We're talking from our minds. We're talking from so many things. Speak from the heart. Because Krishna is in the heart. You're in the heart. That's where the heart is the seat of all existence, the seat of all emotion, in the, in the place where love is present within the heart. So if we can practice that. I think what really makes our japa somewhat less effective is that when we try to finish our japa, when we're in a hurry to get it done, then we lose the, the, the mercy of the, the chanting. We should chant not with a desire to get it done, but with a desire to meet Krishna in the holy name. So a technique you can use is think, all right, this much time for chanting, whatever rounds I chant in that time, it doesn't matter. Let me chant with quality. I know I have this much time, so that's what I'll use like that. Bhaktivinoda Thakur very strongly admonishes those who try to chant just to finish. It's just, it's, it's just that he calls it the restless mind, that's all. So, it's a meditation. Now, Sachinandana Maharaj, who was really, someone who's really been truly um, going deep into the Holy Name and coming up with a lot of understandings on how to approach the Holy Name. He come up with a, he, he's come up with something that's really interesting just lately. He says, if you really want to access or increase hearing, hear the first Hare Krishna. Make, focus your attention on the first Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. And then it's easier to hear the rest of the mantra. Try it, it works, actually. That's a technique. Techniques are aids. They're not the goal. The goal is bhakti. Goal is love. But aids can support things. Just like, you know, when you're trying to do something, if you don't have the, the things to do it with, you might have to struggle, but when you have everything in place, it becomes easy. So techniques are like aids, like that. They help, they assist. But bhakti is the, is the means. So Lord Chaitanya gave the formula. Chant, realizing that you're small. We're small. The soul is one ten thousand the tip of a hair. If you could take a hair and cut it into a hundred pieces and take one of those hundred pieces and cut it again into a hundred pieces, that's the size of the soul. In other words, it's not visible to the human eye. That's how, that's, but that soul is so powerful and is part and parcel of Krishna. That, that, is, that is our real identity, not this body. This body is simply a place where the soul exists. We're not this body. And so when we try to access chanting, we should chant from the heart because the soul is sitting on the heart. That's where the soul exists in the body. It sits on the heart. It's just the location of the soul. So, Try practicing that, chant the first Hare Krishna with, with extra attention. And you'll find it helps like that. But chant. But Prabhupada used to say, 16 rounds is just the beginning. It's just to get you warmed up. <laughs> That's all. It's not the end. Just like when we give, when we give initiations, we say, uh, what are the four regulative principles? And the person will say it, and then we say, do you agree to a chant at least 16 rounds? It's not like maximum. But Prabhupada said, when you're actually chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, and you're actually chanting, he'll, you'll think, 
Why 16 rounds? Why not 16,000? The taste is so sweet, you don't want to stop. <laughs> we want to get to that stage. Like that. So, kirtan supports japa, japa supports kirtan. By performing kirtan, we get a taste for, our japa becomes better, and by performing japa, we get a taste for kirtan. So if you try to perform one or the other, it's going to be a little bit weak on both ends. Because Lord Chaitanya came to bring the kirtan of the holy name into our existence. So this is Lord Chaitanya's formula. Chant Hare Krishna. Is that all right? Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. Anything else? Any? Yes, what is your name again? Glenn. Glenn. Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry. I forget names very fast. I bet I forget them faster. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for, for your teaching, Maharaj. Um, my question is about chanting with beads and chanting without. Um, when we do japa and we're going for 16 rounds, we're using our beads. And, uh, and um, in emergency, of course, we could use our fingers if we had to or whatever. But, but um, in order to chant at all times, um, is it, it best to use the beads as much as possible? Or if we're chanting without the beads after we've done our 16 rounds, it, well, what's, what's the difference? You know, a lot of times having the beads is not practical. We must chant our prescribed rounds on the beads. That's... That's required. But beyond that, we can chant in your mind. You can chant out loud. You can chant anytime. You don't have to have the beads with you. In Bengal, is any in Bengalis here? No Bengalis? Not one? Oh, yeah. Hate Koro Kaje Muki Bolo Hori. Hate koro kaje muke bolo huri. So what does that mean? Work with your hands, hate koro kaje, and chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> so that means you can you can chant any whatever you're doing. Like that. And most of the time our conversations are useless anyway. So better to chant. We just say, hi, how are you, how are you? Oh, you, you look so nice. You don't really mean it, but you say it anyway. <laughs> yeah, this is a lot of small talk, you know. We just kind of like juice up the atmosphere a little bit just so we look sociable. You know, just chant Hare Krishna. I mean, well, devotees are friendly, I know, but sometimes we waste time in useless chatter. And you th actually, the more you become Krishna conscious, the more you benefit others. That's true. Krishna consciousness is not something you can keep to yourself. It's like the sun. And when the sun comes out, it affects everything and everyone. So the more you become Krishna conscious, the more you have an, a, a positive and wonderful effect on others. So therefore, we have to work on ourselves as much as possible and at the same time serve others whenever we can. The process is to work on yourself. Hearing and chanting as much as possible. In association with devotees and makes it even. Satam prasangam mama virya sam vido bhavanti hitkarna rasayana kata. And in the association of devotees hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord is nectar for the ears and happiness for the heart. Mm -hmm. Like that. Bodhiyantas parat param kantiyantas chimam nityam tushyanticha ramanticha. So it's sweet to hear and chant Krishna's glories because Krishna is all attractive. Everything about Krishna is wonderful. I mean, to be God, you have to be pretty wonderful to get that position, you know. So, Krishna is the greatest. 
in all categories of existence. He's not just a scorekeeper. He's the most lovable object. <laughs> and he's, he, Krishna loves us more than you can imagine. If, if you knew how much, Krishna would, how much Krishna loves you, you would feel bad. <laughs> because you realize, he, you know, you can't even reciprocate. You, Krishna is always trying to somehow or other bring us back like that. He's, he's doing it all the time. And when he says, chant my name, Any other questions? Yes? Hare Krishna? Mark? The word Hare. Yeah. Word. Thanks. I've heard three different explanations for the word Hare. First, Prabhupada's, when he talks about the energy of the Lord and engaging us in his service. Right. And then I've heard of the vocative form of Hara, which is Rade. Right. And I've heard of the vocative form of Lord Hari. Which one is it? Or is Both. it all of them? Yeah. Whatever we want, then. So when I'm no. chanting Hare Krishna, what should I focus on when I'm saying? Just Hare, focus Hare. on the sound. But it's actually Radharani. Hare is the energy of God. It's Radha. She is. It's like it's Radha Krishna, Radha Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Radha Radha. Uh, you know, the the second part is can be a little different. Could be Radha Krishna again, or it could be Sitaram. Sita Rams are an expansion of Radha and Krishna like that. So but the focus is on the sound. The sound. And Krishna will reveal himself through the sound. Prabhupada said when you're chanting Hare Krishna nicely, then Krishna's form, Radharani's form will appear in your mind while you're chanting automatically without extra endeavor like that. So it's the vocative Hare, it's a calling, it's Radharani. It's all, it's all those. It's not Hari. <laughs> Don't say Hari because you say Hari Krishna means take away Krishna. <laughs> Hari, no, when he says, when you, when you listen to the slow Java, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, you, you know it's, what I'm talking about. It's, it's Hare. But Hari, Krishna knows what you're saying because he's Bhavahi Janardana. He takes the essence rather than the sound. But for the sake of chanting, we shouldn't say Hari. Hari means one who takes away. H-A-R-I, Hari. One who takes away. So we say Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, like that. Not Hare Krishna. <laughs> it means go away Krishna. <laughs> He's already away, so you want to get him to come, not go, <laughs> push him. Yeah. So pronounce it clearly. Clear pronunciation is important because it helps to focus our attention easier. If our pronunciation is not clear, it's harder to, to, to hear the sound like that. So if you listen to Japa tape from, by Prabhupada, you notice he starts out slow. And that's the way we should start. Start chanting slowly until the mind catches the sound and then the speed will, you know, gradually increase like that. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Sri Sri Kishore Kishore Ki Jai, Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani Ki Jai, Sri Sri Gaurathai Ki Jai, Mithai Gaur Premanandi, Hare Hare Bo. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you.